You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. Hey guys, back with another Borderlands 2 video, and today I figured that I would go over some fairly good weapons that can be acquired very early in Borderlands 2. Now, before we start, I'm going to explain the rationale behind my choices here. Uh, what I've tried to do is pick quality guns and weapons that can not only be acquired in any playthrough, but they can also be acquired before level 15 or 16. Uh, more specifically, all these items can be acquired before the Rising Action Quest. This is where Sanctuary's shield is bombarded by Hyperion Moonshots. Um, I've also tried to avoid a lot of legendaries on this list. Um, while you can get some, like the bonus package, Kerblaster, Hornet, Infinity, and even the Hellfire, uh, you're better off using your time to acquire quest reward weapons than farm for these weapons. But if you do happen to get those weapons, they may actually be better than some of the weapons on this list. I also should mention that because of the nature of Borderlands 2's design, you'll find that you won't be able to keep any one weapon for very long. A pistol that you might get at level 8 is usually obsolete once you have to fight level 12 or level 13 enemies. This trend is consistent with the entire game, and any weapons you find may become obsolete very quickly. But without further ado, these will be the top 8 best early and low level weapons in Borderlands 2. Number 8. The Good Touch and Bad Touch. Surprisingly, you can actually get either of these guns very early in the game. At the same time, I debated on including both of these guns, since you're usually not going to have the amount of money necessary in order to acquire them. Uh, that said, if you receive a lot of money from a higher level player, or if you can transfer high level weapons to a lower level character, you can sell them for a crap ton of money, which will allow you to buy these guns. Uh, regardless of how you get the money, you're going to need about twenty to $40,000, and you'll need to unlock Sanctuary, and once you get there, you're going to need to tip Moxie at her bar. Now, I've found that the most effective technique is to repeatedly switch back and forth between donating $100 and $1,000 to get either of these SMGs the fastest. Usually, the results on which one you get are random. Of the two, the good touch is slightly better than the bad touch, because the good touch heals slightly more for damage dealt than the bad touch does. That said, the bad touch can be a decent corrosive weapon for the early game. It's also important to mention that Sanctuary has its own level, and throughout your first playthrough, the level of Sanctuary will increase as you complete main story missions. Sanctuary's level not only determines the level of the good or bad touch that you receive, but also affects the pricing on ammo and health packs. Both of these aren't as good later on in the game. Even still, they're great weapons in normal and true Vault Hunter mode. Number 7. Fremington's Edge Before I discuss Fremington's Edge, I do know that this is a Hyperion sniper rifle. Uh, if you're still playing on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, you may find that the low field of view on those platforms makes the Fremington's Edge and other Hyperion sniper rifles very difficult to use. So what I will say is if you're playing on 360 or PS3, try to find a different sniper. However, if you're on PC, PS4, or Xbox One, just adjust your FOV so it's a little higher and that should compensate for the weapon sway. For the most part, the Fremington's Edge is essentially a standard Hyperion sniper rifle. What sets it apart from the other Hyperion sniper rifles is that you get to deal extra critical hit damage while zoomed, and the Fremington's Edge has a very high zoom. Uh, the Fremington's Edge scope is even superior to the standard Hyperion scope for snipers, which is already better than all of the other sniper scopes in Borderlands 2. If you've played the original Borderlands, Fremington's Edge is the spiritual successor of sorts to the Atlas Cyclops sniper rifle. If you do want a Fremington's Edge, you'll need to kill Assassin Wreath in Southpaw Steam and Power, and you can do this either during Assassinate the Assassins or afterwards. Number six, the Tinderbox. So assuming you managed to get out of the Southern Shelf, there's a good chance that you defeated Captain Flint and you got your hands on the Tinderbox pistol. Despite this weapon's low level, it's actually fairly good. And what's also nice is that once you get to Tundra Express, as long as you shoot the head off of the snowman that's near the Marcus munitions machine, 
you have a chance of getting another tinder box that will be level 12 or 15 or so. When it comes to fire pistols, the tinder box is pretty good. Uh, like all other bandit weapons, it has a relatively high magazine size, plus you also get a fairly decent elemental effect chance. And early on in the game, you'll find that damage over time effects actually work pretty well. However, later on the game, maybe not so much. It's not all perfect though, because the tinder box consumes two bullets per shot. And if you figure that your magazine is about 40, you're only getting 20 shots. This is actually on par with most other pistols in the game and is only slightly better than Malawan and Jacob's pistols in terms of magazine size. You may also find that the bullet arc and projectile speed makes it somewhat difficult to use at a certain distance as well. If you need a good fire weapon early on though, I would say the tinderbox is going to be pretty good. Number 5. The Jacob's Gatling Gun So while this gun doesn't have a specific place that it drops, I highly recommend that you keep an eye out for these during your travels. You'll find that the Gatling Gun in particular is good because it's one of the few assault rifles with the projectile multiplier, and since it's a Jacob's weapon, your critical hits will deal more damage than usual. It's important to note that since the Gatling Gun has the Vladov Spinny Gun or Minigun Barrel, uh, it can only appear at green rarity or higher. This means you won't see a Gatling gun that's of white rarity, and you'll only see Gatling guns that are anywhere between green, blue, and purple rarity. When it comes to assault rifles really early on in Borderlands 2, the Gatling gun is really powerful, especially if you can manage to get all three projectiles to hit the same crit spot. At the same time, you may find that this gun chews through ammo pretty quickly, and not only will your magazine deplete quickly, but you may also run out of assault rifle ammo fairly quickly as well. Now, for this reason, you can kind of fix the magazine size problem. Uh, what I recommend is that you keep an eye out for the flush variant of the Gatling gun. This way, you're going to get a higher magazine size and maybe at least one or two more shots. Number four, the teapot. This is a gun that you should acquire before you decide to take on Wilhelm. It's a pretty good idea to do Tiny Tina's You Are Cordially Invited line of side quests in Tundra Express, and if you complete the Tea Party one in particular, you'll receive the teapot as a quest reward. Despite the low burst count, the teapot is very effective against the loaders that appear in both Tundra Express as well as in the nearby end of the line area. In fact, you may find that this corrosive only pistol is really good up against Wilhelm and will make short work of him and his surveyor bots. Uh, I'd say this pistol is really good for the first two playthroughs in both circumstances. Uh, the thing is, is that you'll find that it is surpassed by the Hornet later on. But again, if you want something that's easy to get early on in the game, the teapot is a really good choice. Otherwise, it is unfortunate there are only two other Tiny Tina weapons in Borderlands 2. It's also unfortunate that one of them is impractical to use, while the other one is impractical to actually find. I guess at the end of the day, at least we have the teapot. Number three, the last gal. Of all of the entries on this particular list, the last gal may be the easiest weapon to obtain. As soon as you go to Frostburn Canyon, you can enter the cave area and the gun will always appear in one of the pools there. Now, in my opinion, the last gal is Borderlands 2's spiritual successor to the Double Anarchy SMG from the very first Borderlands. This is because the last gal is just like the Double Anarchy in the sense that it is an SMG that has a times 2 projectile multiplier and can never come in an element. What's also great about the last gal is that it has a relatively high fire rate, and unlike most other weapons that have a double projectile multiplier, you can only consume one round of ammo per shot with the last gal. My only two issues with this gun is the lack of an element and that the last gal is a burst fire weapon. I think it would have been a lot more useful as a fully automatic weapon that could have come in either slag, fire, shock, or corrosive. Even still, this is a fairly nice weapon for all characters. Number two, the Flame of the Firehawk. All right, so I know this is a shield and not really a gun or weapon per se, but the Flame of the Firehawk is a shield that you should definitely get really early on. The Flame of the Firehawk is a Nova shield that only comes in fire element. However, unlike most of the Nova shields in the game, Novas continuously deploy while your shield is depleted. 
and if a portion of your shield recharges, the continuous nova stop. And from this point, the shield will need to be fully recharged in order for this effect to become active again. The Flame of the Firehawk is usually one of the first legendary items new players can come across. Uh, the fact that you can get a Flame of the Firehawk upon completing the Enkindling side quest mission in Frostburn Canyon means that you can have this shield by level 8 or 10. This should make some of the early enemies in Three Horns Valley, Southpaw Steam and Power, and even parts of the Dust fairly easy to deal with. At later levels in Borderlands 2, the Flame of the Firehawk becomes one of Krieg's best pieces of gear, and his ability to increase any shield's recharge delay means he can keep the continuous Nova damage going on longer than most of the other characters. Assuming that you could get this at any level, this would be the perfect shield for Krieg. Number 1. Vladoff Barreled Snipers. Now, I know this may be relatively vague, but you should really try to keep an eye out for sniper rifles with the Vladoff Barrel. If you don't know what that is, the Vladoff Barrel is the only sniper barrel in Borderlands 2 that has two barrels instead of just one. Each manufacturer has their own sniper rifle with the Vladoff Barrel. Uh, keep an eye out for the Doll Scout, Hyperion Competition, Malawan Raykel, and especially keep an eye out for the Vladov Droog and the Jacobs Diab. The Jacobs Diab may have slightly lower base damage than other Jacobs sniper rifles, but it is still a Jacobs sniper with a decent critical hit modifier. Plus, of all of the Jacobs sniper rifles, the Diab has the highest fire rate. The Vladov Droog, on the other hand, is your standard boss killer. Assuming you have one of these at the proper level, you should be able to unload on an enemy's crit spot and deal significant amounts of damage. The full auto feature here is quite nice, assuming that you get all of those hits on target. Regardless, I think the Vladoff Barreled Snipers are some of the best in the game, aside from the other unique snipers that you can get throughout Borderlands 2. Uh, you'll find that these excel on all characters, but both Maya and Zero are particularly good with them. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and as always, take care and I'll see you all next time.